Um, SWAN systems. SWAN's actually an acronym for um, scheduling water and nutrients. Um, so we're actually about aggregating and collaborating of data um, to make better informed decisions to drive profits. Um, we're a team of 13 now. We've actually got two based in South Australia there. Uh, in South Australia here, we work across multiple sectors. A um, bit of background on myself, I'm actually from uh, Mildura, went to Rosewood, the Ag College, uh, got a degree in horticulture and irrigation, and then went farming in Western Australia. Um, started growing bananas and table grapes in the desert. Bananas were using 22 megs a hectare, so sort of worked out fairly quickly. If it didn't get good at the irrigation, I was going to go broke fairly quickly, so uh, we uh, got stuck in at a water nutritional management it was a bit of a bit of a thing, and then um, about mid 2000s, I started sort of consulting across Western Australia, mainly with table grapes, but other crops, citrus and bananas, on sort of precision water and nutritional management. In 2010, Rio Tinto came and approached us, and what happens is um, you're not probably not familiar, but when they mine iron ore, 70% of the iron ore is below the water table, and they they basically dewater the aquifer take the water 20 kilometres away and um, and just dispose it. So they couldn't do that in this case, it was next to a national park. So they actually came to us and came to us and asked us to help them use that water. So I think they spent $140 million, a, a heap of centre pivots in the middle of nowhere. Um, that we were using between 60 and 120 megs a day. Um, lots of soil moisture probes, lots of water meters, lots of weather stations and, and the whole thing was um, there couldn't be any risk, so it was all about risk mitigation. But what we sort of worked out was that, in the process of sort of fine tuning and having an operation to um, to minimise risk, it was very precise, and and that those precision systems managed to, um, yeah, sort of at the gross gross returns and the profits and the yields getting out at the drove that came that came out of that were pretty significant. So we thought we had something of value, and then that's when we started the process about uh, putting Swan together. So. The whole thing with um, data in your farm and lots of silos, and I like a good picture, but that's 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 the that's the data on a farm, and and, and getting getting driving value out of that is is really really complex. Um, there's different systems. It, there's very little integration. It's time consuming. It gets lost, and and most farmers sort of don't haven't got time to sort of review it properly and get the most value out of it. So it's a messy workshop, and. Uh, a lot of you have probably worked in a messy workshop and it's not very enjoyable. So, so we sort of set about trying to, well, what do we need to do to clean the workshop up, make it so you can make quicker, better, faster, more accurate decisions in terms of operating a, your water and nutritional management. So on top of the data complexities, uh, there's the complexities around each crop. So we work with a whole heap of different crops and this is the phenological stage of a, of a grapevine. It's pretty topical for South Australia, but there's a whole heap of reasons to manage your water balance and nutrition across the whole stage, across the whole sort of annual season. Um, so Swan Systems itself is, um, it's about aggregation of data in the field. So we've got um, soil moisture sensor data, flow data, fertilizers applied. We can, we can actually attribute to nutrients in the background water into the, the nutrient audit. Um, forecast data, so we, we're partners with the Bureau of Meteorology um, about what we access to bomb good weather data, um, actual data, and then satellite imagery. So they're the sort of, at the moment, the sort of base data inputs we get, and then we, then we configure the, you know, each block, or we call them individual managed units, specifically for what you want. So there might be Shiraz versus Chardonnay. There might be different soil types. Um, you can sort of choose where your data comes from. We've got all the nutrient uptake curves in there, so you can actually create you know, a nutrient plan for any crop, um, any irrigated crop, basically. Um, to, but it's more about refining it for you to drive it. Even something like processing tomatoes, you know, there might be 10 different sort of management strategies for a variety, for a soil type, for an end product um, that, have got a, that might have a different sort of management strategy behind them. So we're very configurable. Day to day, we're about uh, uh, managing irrigations. Uh, we've actually got a, uh, a recommended irrigation schedule, which is a new functionality we brought out recently. So it'll tell you how much to water and when, but always looking forward. So we're always using the, the Bureau of Meteorology and IBM globally, um, the data to say exactly how much water you want to put on in the future. 
we record nutrients, um, we've got alert, alerts and alarms. The allocation, um, allocation tool is a good one, it's got a lot of popularity. We've actually got people using that specifically for that. Um, it'll, you can run scenarios, so it's a very thorough allocation management tool. You can run scenarios if there's a dry winter or hot summer on what that would mean to how much water you need. So it means you can be in the marketplace a bit earlier and, and know your requirements. And the health index, um, that's the sort of satellite imagery. There's lots going on in that space. We don't pretend to be, um, our offer's pretty basic, NDVI. There's 100 different indexes now um, being worked on around the world. So we're, we're, we don't design these things or we just sort of will pick them up and use them as they become available from the universities or the research. So in terms of reporting, um, we've got the ability to do a, a budget to actual on um, any elements. So agriculturally, you know, the 13 elements you use for growing crops, there's actually 108 analytes in the system. Um, you can do budget to actual on your water allocation and any nutrient. Um, we've got five different levels of authority. So uh, the people putting the fertiliser on, it can be you know, pretty simple to put in. They put on 200 kilograms of urea on a certain paddock. Um, but that'll go right through the whole system. So in, uh, in the future, we're sort of automating some of those reports so the farm manager or the farm supervisor can, can get an accurate report. So it's pretty easy to sort of collect. The hard parts are when you sort of process and, and give your management insights. But, and then what we're about is we're bound to repeat that. So we want a, we want a repeatable system um, that you can fine tune your management for a particular crop or a particular variety and a particular soil type and roll it out for coming seasons and just get better and better and more accurate over time. So our offer sort of got several different layers. So irrigation scheduling's um, yeah, a pretty major component of it. The nutrient management, uh, the allocation management uh, imagery, and then ongoing support. So we're, um, we allocate a, fa a fairly reasonable chunk of our sort of fees to working with, um, working with the customers to make sure they get value out of it. Um, like I said, we've got two people just recently, full-time in South Australia now, so it's, it's, it's a really, really important part. And because if they don't get value out of it or they don't use it, um, they won't be turning up next year to write a checkout, so it's pretty important to us. So the key attributes, uh, we're actually hardware independent. It's, um, that's going by itself now. So uh, We work with about 50 different brands of um, hardware um, across Australia and internationally. We're a tool for best management practice. Um, we evaluate to existing hardware. Like I said, we're sort of trying to bring all that hardware in and make better qualified decisions. That's really going by itself now. Um, a platform for precision management, and as I mentioned before, repeatable management blueprint, and so we're subscription-based um, with support. Who uses SWAN? Um, so horticulture, we've got close to 8,000 hectares on it now across Australia. Um, we do a bit of the dairy sector in Australia, but mostly New Zealand, with about 2,000 hectares. Uh, we work with SA Water here, um, a couple of water utilities, mainly because of the, the, our ability to manage water and nutrients. Um, local governments, the City of Melbourne's on it, doing stuff in the City of Adelaide. Um, golf courses, three golf courses, and, and we're actually um, doing our first fully autonomous school here, so we're talking back to the hardware um, in South Australia, so we've sort of got 15 schools on our system now. So we're Fundamentally, water and nutritional management is the same, whatever crop you're going. It's more about configuring it to those sort of circumstances. Some of the benefits we're seeing is um, yeah, just sort of better informed decisions. Um, we, we try and deliver a, a minimum of five times return. Um, oops. Here we go. Five times return the investment. If we don't do that, we're either too expensive or it's not right for the customer. Um, simplify irrigation and nutrient management. Um, maintaining all those historic records in one place is a pretty important one. Um, yeah, better control on individual blocks. Managing allocations proactively is, is becoming more and more important. Helping manage um, limitations of infrastructures is another important one, especially with sort of heat waves and climatic variability. Uh, reporting on water and nutrients. Uh, delivering improved environmental outcomes is something most of the big wine grape companies now have got, um, have got um, you know, sustainability requirements. So just a bit on what the future holds for us. So we, um, we haven't got a phone app at the moment, we're more a PC based system. 
So we're in the process of developing a, a phone app. We're looking at doing a, a SWAN analytics for, for sites that have got multiple farms, so a system that can sit over, you know, you might have 10 or 15 farms. One of our big ones we're doing, uh, we're rolling out soon, is 18,000 hectares. They've got 11 farms across Australia, so you're giving them ability, what sort of information will come out of a farm account that, that help to help the organisation run a better show. Auto-generated reports and alerts, so something like our soil moisture balance report um, can go to the irrigation manager every day, can go to the farm manager once a week and there might be a farm supervisor we'll send it to once a, once a month. So it's just, it's very configurable and that, um, that'll be, so you can do water allocation reports, soil moisture reports or nutritional reports when and how the user likes. The imagery offer, like there's a lot happening in that space and we, we sort of work with a few of them, we're having ongoing conversations and it's going to be a really important part of managing farming operations in the future. I'm not, it's very different, the, the benefit for each sector is very different and um, or any, each organisation, so there's lots happening there, I think it's just, we're just trying to keep on top of it and work out where we go, but as I mentioned before, there's actually a um, hundred indexes now, so um, it's a busy space. Uh, we're bringing in a live dashboard, we're actually doing a big project with Telstra, we're bringing in a, a live dashboard for weather stations and, and a bit of disease modelling. Um, and then the last thing we're doing is, is looking at doing some plant-based sensors, so um, yeah, canopy temperature and sap and SAP and um, dendrometers, I mean, they're just another part of the puzzle that would sort of help complete, complete the picture. Um, and I think all, like, like most farm data, it's, it's good for a snippet, but until you wrap it all up and uh, make a better decision based on all the facts, it's, it's quite difficult. Uh, a bit, we were asked to sort of address a few of the challenges in ag tech. I think um, accessing data is collaboration of data. Like I said, we've got 50 integrators now. Or we get data from 50 sort of different other businesses, really. Um, it's a really, two years ago when we started this journey, it was, you asked hardware providers for their data and they looked at you like you were a bit queer, but now the things are a bit better now. Um, so most people are sort of comfortable with the idea of sharing data to get a better decisions. Farmers are pretty busy. Um, if there's a tide of change and three or four blokes waiting to go to work, they're not going to talk to you basically, so you've got to get used to it and, and work with it and, and try and try and be comfortable and, and be smart about how you approach a farmer in their, in their daily daily work schedule. Uh, yeah, compelling issues on the, competing issues on the farm is exactly that. Management versus operational staff, uh, one of the things we've had is that sometimes you, the corporate guys really like it and then you start talking to the guys on the ground and, and they're not so keen, so it's it's just the reality of the technology. We're, 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 our technology is applicable for the operators, for the managers and the, and the investors. We've had people ask us for reviewer-only access to their patch of um, vines that they don't live near, so um, they can just make sure things are going on. It makes everyone pretty accountable, but it um, does scare some people too. Staff technical capacity, it's, you've sort of really got to concentrate on that. We've got some amazing people, some of the projects we work with. Um, very capable, very smart. And in other, other, other sites, it's just not, not that easy. They haven't had the exposure to computers, so you've got to sort of be mindful and sort of go back to the basics and start from where you need to start. Staff turnover is another issue. Is um, Often we can spend a, a high of time training someone up and then they're, they're not there next time you're there. So that's just the realities of the industry, so get used to it. And connectivity, um, getting better. The low-level satellites are going to change this, I think, but... Um, you know, getting data out of a farm in a lot of places, not so much over here, I think, but in the so places like the cotton industry in New South Wales, it can be a real issue. Issues influence, influence the adoption. This is sort of Emma's work. For, um, you know, really understand what are the advantages. You know, is it financial, environmental, social? Understand, understanding the business you're dealing with and, and what, you know, what are their pain points is, is very important. Is it compatible with current systems? I mean, really make sure the more you can utilise the existing data on a farm, the better uptake you're going to have. There has been a whole strategy from the start, but it, it's, it's certainly it's our strategic advantage, but it's also our Achilles heel. What's its observability? Um, you know, how easy is it to use? I think Emma uh, talks about um, 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 that was what made GPS so... Um, the adoption pretty good with GPS was pretty easy and basic in, in people's face. The complexity, be mindful of the complexity. We are a pretty complex system. Um, we're not a $7.50 widget, so it does take time for people to get their head around what we do and how we do it. 
and can it be trialled and, and evaluated? So we do generally offer sort of a bit of incentive to trial the system and on, on a block or two and see how they go and sit back and take it for a test, test drive and if it fits, it fits. If it doesn't, it doesn't. So um, it's very important in terms of influencing the adoption. So a bit about our approach. We're, we're pretty persistent. Um, nothing like wearing a bit of boot leather. There's probably people in this room that have blocked my phone number. Um, it's, it's actually really important. It's just make sure, you know, build that relationship, be in front of people and, and make sure you're still there. Really identifying issues at a farm level um, or business level. Pick the right partners. You know, we've, um, don't be too scared to walk away from an enterprise that's not suitable. You just have to get it right. So if you don't get it right, there's all sorts of issues. Piloting and trialling, we will do everything we can do to, to, to pilot or give someone a trial, it, as long as it's not too complex. But it, it, it is some of our most successful, and you know, we've got testimonials on our website from people who have used that system. We've just given it to them for 12 months to get their head around and take it for a test drive. Research project, we, do, we work with about six research organisations across Australia. We actually see this as a really important part of not validating our product, but also working, getting into industries and understanding their pain points. It's actually very important. And support, so we, you've just got to do it well. As I mentioned before, you've just got to be there, give them support, give them what they need, when they need it, and, and, and make sure that they understand and, and get value out of your system. So it's pretty simple. If you don't make their life easier, you're wasting their time, your time and their money. One of the other things is, it, you know, in our case, it's fine to have a, have a system, which is, you know, this is our technology of Swan Systems, but... There's actually quite a few systems that we use to, to deliver that service, and it's often something that startups really don't think of. But you know, everything from customer service portals to help desks, um, you know, doing customer surveys, it's really, really important. And we're, we're lucky we've got three founders, and it sort of works out where one founder looks after each part. But you know, don't underestimate the value of you know, having an analytics package and working out if a customer's getting on there and where they're going and are they, is there anything else they can add or is, is there anything else that they don't, can't add or you know, really understanding your customer and how they use the system is really, really important. And I sort of can't emphasise that enough. I mean, I didn't know what a Google AdWord was a couple of years ago, but um, it's been a bit of a learning curve for us because we all come from agricultural backgrounds. But, um, yeah, having systems to make sure a customer gets value is, is incredibly important. So opportunities, um, data really does have the benefit to you know, drive a lot of productivity in agriculture. And I really think corporate farming hasn't been that successful over the years, but this data will, will really help corporate farming get drive better benefits. It is evolution, not revolution. It's what email was 20 years ago. Don't expect people to pick up your tech and run away with it and be obsessed with it in two days. So we are a great hub for innovation, as most people know. Um, there are genuine global market opportunities, um, especially South Australia and the water. The water achievements over the last 20 years are, have been pretty impressive, and that's a, an example of that. And exporting markets. That's all.